Hey everybody, it is Zach here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my OSRS Lizardman Shaman's Guide. Shamans are a pretty strong monster that live on Zaya, mostly in the Shazian house. They're pretty easy to fight, and they drop the coveted Dragon Warhammer, which is why most of you are likely here. You're trying to get a Dragon Warhammer drop. In this guide, I'm going to start with the requirements and recommended stats and whatnot before I'm jumping into your gear and your inventory setup. Then I'll talk about how to get to the shamans and what their mechanics actually look like. After that, I'll discuss a typical trip, and then finally we can discuss the possible loot from Lizardman Shamans. First of all, to fight Lizardman Shamans, you're going to need 100% favor in the Shazian house. Shazian is really one of the fastest houses to get done, so this is not a very difficult requirement overall. This is going to be a ranging guide, so I suggest having 75 plus range to fight these. Not only is that the requirement to wield a toxic blowpipe, but if you're using a different weapon, this is a pretty good milestone to get you started. If you think you're getting really slow kills and you have the bare minimum range level, then you should clearly go train your range first. The higher your range level is, the faster your kills are going to be. It is suggested to have your hardcore end diaries completed if you plan on fighting these on a slayer task, and I'll dive into that a little more in the gear section. You don't have to fight shamans on a lizard man task, but it is going to speed up your kills a little bit. There is a lot of running involved too, so having maybe a stamina potion or a higher agility level could benefit in the long run. You'll see if this makes a difference or not once you jump into the fight though. Here's a look at what my typical gear setup is. I'm going to go over all the possible replacements for any of this gear, but for the most part none of this is really too difficult to obtain, and it's more worth spending your time getting the right setup before you grind out a bunch of them, rather than grinding them out really slow. The main thing you're going to notice, obviously, is the Shazian armor. The Shamans have an attack that can hit you pretty hard, but it is completely negated if you're wearing full Shazian armor 5. Each piece of the armor gives you a 1 in 5 chance to negate the damage, meaning that you do have to wear all 5 pieces for it to fully negate. You can obtain the set through fighting Shazian warriors in the ring located here. There are 5 warriors, each dropping a different tier of armor. You have to start with tier 1, and then collect all 5 pieces before you move on to tier 2, 3, 4, and 5. You're guaranteed to get the full set in 5 kills though, so this means you only need 25 total kills to get all of your tier 5 armor. It's obviously possible to kill shamans without the armor, but I really don't recommend it, so I'm not even going to discuss the other pieces for these slots outside of that Slayer Helmet. As long as you've completed the Core End Hard Diaries, you can talk to Captain Cleave, and he's going to make your Slayer Helmet count as the Shazian Helmet Tier 5. That way you could do this with a Slayer Helmet and still fully negate that attack. And if you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about with negating that attack, I'll show it in the mechanics section. In your cape slot, you really should just be wearing an Ava's device. Your best one's obviously the Ava's Assembler, but not everybody's done Dragon Slayer 2, so an Ava's Accumulator really isn't that bad. The best ranging item for your next slot is the Necklace of Anguish. This gives a filthy ranging accuracy bonus, but also a ranged strength bonus, which is fairly uncommon for gear that isn't in your ammo slot. Next, you've got the Amulet of Fury, and then, worst case scenario, you could just wear an Amulet of Glory. The best weapon to use here is the Toxic Blowpipe. A Twisted Bow can crank pretty hard on these guys, but it's not going to hit hard enough to beat the Blowpipe. If you can't afford a Blowpipe, then a Rune Crossbow will do the job, but if you're in a strange situation where you have a Crossbow that's better than Rune, but you can't get a Blowpipe, then obviously the better Crossbow is fine too, but if you spent money on an expensive Crossbow, then the money would be better spent on the Blowpipe and Scales instead. For your ammo, I would suggest Addy Darts in the Blowpipe and Amethyst Broad Bolts in your crossbow. You can just use regular Broad Bolts to get the job done if you don't have Amethyst. And don't forget, if you are using a Blowpipe, then your ammo slot is empty and you should be wearing a Blessing, which is going to help for Prayer Bonus. If you do have the Elite Koran Diaries done, you can wear the Rada's Blessing 4, which gives a little bit more of a Prayer Bonus than any of the other Blessings. You only need a shield if you're using a crossbow. The Buckler is the best shield in the game, but if you could afford a Buckler, then you should probably just be using a Blowpipe. The Odium Ward is a good range shield option, and the Book of Law really isn't that bad. It's a little less accurate, but it does give a prayer bonus. Even a Black Dragonhide shield is really cheap, and it's going to work out if you use it. It's better than not having a shield at all. The best ring for ranging is an Archer's Ring. You really should imbue this ring of the Nightmare Zone to double the stats on it. A Brimstone Ring is basically just an unimbued Archer's Ring here, since you're only going to be using range, and your defense really doesn't matter that much. So, highly suggested to wear the Archer's Ring. A Ring of Wealth can be remotely helpful since they do drop coins if you don't feel like picking them up on your own. Again, the gear setup is very simple, but at this point if you still have any questions about what gear you're trying to wear there, just let me know in the comments section below, and I can get back to you as soon as possible. Here's what inventory that I would bring with me normally. The exact ratio of potions can vary depending on what your levels and gear are, of course, so it's possible you take this exact inventory with you, you do one trip and realize, 
I need a much different inventory. I go with two to three divine ranging potions, attempting to last right around an hour per trip. I don't always use each dose though. Again, this is something that you kind of have to eyeball. You can bring regular ranging potions instead. They're really not that bad, but the divine potions are going to keep your damage output really solid the entire trip, which means more kills. I've then got 10 restore potions squeezed in there, mostly just to even out the rows on top because I'm a little OCD about it. But again, the exact amount that you're going to need is going to vary. If you're always running out of restores or your prayer potions first, then you probably should be bringing more of those with you. If you seem to have extras, then maybe you should be bringing the other things that you're running out of. I use restores rather than prayer potions because they give one more prayer point per sip and they rarely cost that much more than prayer potions. It's fine just to use regular prayer potions, but slightly more efficient in longer runs if you use the restores. As we move to the bottom of the inventory, I've got one stamina potion in case I get caught running too much. For the most part, you shouldn't need this potion. That's why I just bring the one just in case. But again, depending on your agility level and then your gear, if you're bringing heavier gear, you might run out of run a little bit faster, so you might need the stamina potion. I have two Antidote Plus Pluses for poison protection since these things can poison you. Even if you're wearing the Shazian armor, you do have to bring antidotes. You could bring five doses to last right about 60 minutes, but the extra inventory space doesn't really matter much, so I usually just grab two full potions. If you have a different poison protection, you can just bring enough to last around an hour. Or if you're not getting lengthy enough trips, then you could bring less poison protection, obviously. Just remember, these things can poison you, and the poison hits very hard. In my rune patch, I simply have some alks for some rune items and stabs that they drop. They actually have a decent amount of alks here, so if you're an Iron Man, you are looking to get a decent amount of cash from this. I do use house teleports to travel back to the bank, so any bank teleport you have could replace this. And then I bring a holy wrench to help with the prayer potion usage. If you have a max cape, it counts as both your house teleports and your holy wrench when it's in your inventory. So you could just bring that instead. But obviously not everybody here has a max cape, so I do suggest bringing the holy wrench with you. It's not a terrible idea to bring the Bone Crusher if you have it. It's only 15 prayer XP per kill, but as an Iron Man, it could be pretty helpful. Also, if you're using the Fairy Rings and you don't have your Elite Lumbridge Diaries done, don't forget to bring a Draman Staff for your traveling. There's multiple locations where you can fight Shamans. Originally, there were only Shamans in the Western Canyon here in the Shazian House. There's also a Slayer-only dungeon, though, that's located in the Swamplands way out west. I'll be featuring the newest spot for the most part, which is the Lizard Man Temple under the town of Mulch. I don't really know how to say it. If you're on a Slayer task and you wanted to use the Slayer only caves, you could do that. But you can also fight them in the Mulch dungeon when you're on task. You don't have to go to the Slayer only caves. And if you're looking for more information about the Slayer only caves, I will talk about it briefly after the featured area. There's multiple entrances to the temple, but only one exit in the western part of the dungeon. For the most part, you're just teleporting out of here, so the exit doesn't really matter. And often, if you're running from the CIR Fairy Ring, which is just north of the Farming Guild and really is a pretty short run, you're probably going to enter right about here. The Shamans have a couple of unique mechanics. For the most part, they aren't very difficult to dodge, though. First of all, you have a regular range attack, which is just a small green projectile. Protect from range is 100% going to block this, so your problem is solved. Just protect from range the whole time. Next, we have a much larger green projectile, which is more like a green blob. This attack hits an area based on where you were standing when the shaman used the attack, so you can potentially run away from it, and if you don't get out of the way, you're going to get hit very hard. But, if you're wearing all five of those Shazian pieces, then this is the attack that it negates. If this green blob hits you, and you have five pieces of tier five Shazian armor, it doesn't do a thing, which makes this a hundred times easier to do. You don't have to focus on that attack at all. Sometimes the shamans will resurrect some small purple shamans, which will follow you around for a second and then explode. These are easy to dodge by just running away from them, and even if they do hit you, it doesn't hit too hard. You're likely to get hit by one here and there, unless you're really locked in. The most annoying attack that the shamans have is when they jump in the air. The shaman's going to land on the spot you were standing in when it jumped, so similar to some of his other attacks, you just have to run away. When the shaman's in the air, you can still actually click on his hitbox, which messes you up a little bit, so make sure when you try to click to run away, you don't get a red X and you're clicking on the shaman that's up in the air on accident. That way you're not going to run and you're going to take some damage. This is even worse if you're fighting multiple shamans at one time, which is a large benefit of fighting these in a single combat area. Finally, the shamans have a melee attack that's only going to be used if you're standing too close to them. This is super easy to deal with since you're using range, you can just stand far away from them when attacking. 
Let's go ahead and look at a typical trip. I'm going to be focused on the Lizard Man Temple location for this section, but I'll also discuss the few differences you might see if you go to the Slayer only caves when fighting these. I did show how to get here before, but here's a sped up version of running to the temple from the CIR Fairy Rings. Once you get into the temple, there are a couple of rooms with shamans, but I'm going to be featuring the Northwestern Room. Set your quick prayers to protect from range and whatever your best offensive range prayer is. The quicker you get kills, the quicker you're going to get that Dragon Warhammer. If you are not using Divine Ranging Potions, then you should throw Preserve on there too. Don't forget to sip that Ranging Potion, turn on your quick prayers, and go ahead and get into the room. There's only a few things you really got to focus on when you're fighting these guys. Remember to stand back from them so that they don't use melee. If they resurrect those little purple guys, you can get a couple hits in before you have to run away, but make sure you take off before they blow up. It really doesn't take long to get this timing down, and again, the purple guys are not too dangerous. The other mechanic that they could hit you with is jumping on you. First of all, if it jumps, you just gotta walk out of the way. It's really easy to not take damage from the jump, but you also can't attack the shaman while it's in the air, which means every time it jumps, it slows the kill down. Shamans are pretty large creatures, so they can't fit in every spot in the room. This means if you're standing in one of those spots that it can't fit in, it won't jump to you because it just, it can't. In this room, there's only a couple spots that this works, basically the corners of the room by the vases, other than the northeast side. You should focus on standing in these spots whenever you're fighting the shamans so that they never jump. And if you have to run away from the purple guys, you can usually time it between attacks so you're always standing in one of the corners when the shaman attacks. It really won't take long to get used to hanging out in the corners of the room and at this point you've got the whole fight down. Stand in the corners, run away from purple guys, try not to get too near the shamans unless maybe you're picking up loot or running away from something, you know? If you're taking too much damage, you might want to bring some food with you while you're learning, or maybe you just AFK too much, you're taking too much damage from the purple guys, for instance. I usually find that the potato drops and the blowpipe specs tend to make up for any of the mistakes I make in terms of HP. Once you run out of supplies, you can just make your way to the bank and start over again. If you're on a Slayer task and you want to fight them in the Slayer only caves, it really works the same other than where to stand. First of all, here's that sped up look on how to get to the Slayer caves. I went from the top of the mountain that Xerix Honor takes you to. You do need to do some raids to unlock this teleport, but I've shown you on the map how to get here too. Once you get in the cave, there's actually a few areas where you can fight them. This is generally a pretty empty place since you have to be on task for it, so it shouldn't be very crowded in here. The nice part about these shamans is that they are way bigger than the shamans in the Lizard Man Temple. This means that you don't have to actually stand in the corner. You could just stand on a wall in general and they won't jump to you. So as long as you hug the edges, these things won't jump in the air. And again, it's easy to dodge the damage that they're gonna do when it jumps in the air, but it slows your kill down a lot too. So the less jumps, the more kills per hour you're gonna get. It's pretty convenient in the Slayer only room to only have to stand on the walls, not on the corners, but you're not necessarily gonna get faster kills other than the fact that you're on a Slayer task. But if you went and fought them in the Lizard Man Temple on a Slayer task, you're really gonna see just about the same speed. Now that we've discussed all of that, we can finally talk about the best part, the loot. The regular drops from the shamans really aren't that bad. They've got a few alkables, and for the most part, all the other drops are stackable or noted, so you can pick up just about anything. 100 kills in an hour is a pretty common pace for these. If you're on Slayer Task or you're using maybe some higher tier ammo, you could definitely get faster kills. And of course, if you're lower level or don't have the preferred gear, you might get less kills per hour. The regular drops add up fairly well, but if you're using a blowpipe, it's also a little pricey to fight them. I always assume anywhere from 500 to 600k an hour profit without the big ticket item. And by the big ticket item, I mean that Dragon Warhammer. This is a 1 in 5,000 drop, which means at 100 kills per hour, you would expect to see one every 50 hours. And that all depends on your luck, of course. At the time of making this video, the hammer is about 42 mil. 42 mil in 50 hours would add 840. 40k an hour to the previous numbers, which means if you are getting the hammer on the drop rate, you're looking at 1.3 to 1.4 mil an hour profit. Since this does require such a rare drop, you're rarely going to see an hour where you actually make more than 1 mil, but then occasionally you're going to have an hour that you make that 42 mil. If you get really lucky on hammers, you get a couple of them quickly, you could get rich before you know it. And of course, like I said, this all depends on not only how fast you're killing the shamans, but really how good your RNG is. It's nice that they do make a little bit of profit without getting the hammer, so even if you get unlucky, you're still profiting, but you're really hoping for that hammer drop, obviously. I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about when it comes to Lizard Man Shamans. If you have any more questions about this guide, be sure to leave them in the comments section below, and I can get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching, everybody. If you got some useful information or you just enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. I also stream on Twitch. I have a Twitter and Discord channel, which all links are in the description. Thanks again for watching, and best of luck on that Warhammer grind.